control it Put it all out in the open If it's only for a moment It's a lifetime of emotion Put it all out in the open Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an equine behavior basics video. And the reason why I want to do this one is that I think that horses are one of the most misunderstood animals when it comes to reading their body language and their behavior correctly. There is a lot of basics in horse care and management that we are taught when we're starting out riding that is just not correct. And this obviously doesn't go for everyone. There's people that might have better role models when they're starting out, but generally speaking, there's just a huge disconnect between what is accurate and what the horse is actually telling you versus how we interpret it. And I think that that leads to a lot of problems with people and their horses. And that's why I wanted to do this video because I think that a basic knowledge of equine behavior and learning theory, which is how they learn, would help any rider at all with any of their problems. And it might even help you prevent a massive injury from occurring because maybe you'll notice minor changes in behavior before it even happens. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. And I have a bunch of photos of horses that I'm gonna be using to discuss their body language. And then I'll also help people out with the basics of learning theory and what the heck people are meaning when they reference terms from that. Also, I think something that's relevant for me to comment on is my experience, and I'm not a scientist. I'm not someone that holds a PhD or is a professional equine behaviorist. However, I have taken a bunch of equine science courses through golf, and one thing that I think is important, because I know that a lot of people don't like to take people seriously if they don't trust the source, so I just wanted to clarify that while I'm not uh, someone that holds a PhD and has a history of experience in equine behavior working as a scientist, I do have an equine science background. I did a bunch of courses for equine science through Guelph University, and I'm almost finished my certificate of equine science, and I did their equine behavior and advanced equine behavior classes, and I got like 96% in one of them and 90% in the other. So I would like to think that I retained the information well. And then I also have my IAABC certified equine behavior consultant certificate. And it's not easy to get because you need to fill out a very detailed form on case studies and also all the basics of learning theory and reading horses emotions and their body language correctly. So I promise you I'm not speaking out of my ass and I'll also post some resources down below so that you can read them. But yeah, I'm not just doing this to be someone that's not qualified to do it, I promise. So I'm going to start off with one of the behaviors that I believe to be the most widely recognized one by horse people, and it's when horses pin their ears flat against their skull. This doesn't mean that they're just swiveling their ears back to listen to something. It's when they bring their ears back and pin them against the skull. And generally speaking, the flatter they are, the more pissed off the horse is. And that's obviously a colloquial term. Usually they pin their ears when they're either resource guarding food, warning another horse not to come closer, or asking them to stop doing whatever they're doing if they're not okay with it. But you'll also see them do it under saddle if they're uncomfortable or in pain. So it's a rather universal behavior and context is what people really need to look into because if it's due to discomfort, it'll be stuff like when you do the girth up, your horse pins, they might bite at you. Or when you're doing certain things under saddle, they pin. And that means it's probably linked to something that's painful. Or if not, they're predicting something bad's about to happen or they're frustrated. So you really need to remember to look into the context of it before you completely label the behavior. But pinned ears is never really Really going to be a positive emotional state with the exception of sometimes when horses are working or running really fast they'll pin their ears back to avoid having a bunch of air blow into them as seen in this photo of milo galloping I also want to clarify that pinned ears doesn't mean that the horse is always extremely unhappy or needs help or is in pain. Horses will pin ears to try to get the herd to move, like Milo will pin his ears and snake his head when he wants the other horses to move and he's trying to go somewhere or when he's trying to move them off of food. And similarly, like I said about the galloping, horses will pin their ears when they're galloping sometimes or during play sometimes, like what Banksy is doing in this rearing photo. And then you also have the ears when they're slightly back but not completely pinned, like Percy in this other photo 
where he has his ears turned back, but he's not unhappy. He's rather relaxed, and you can see this by the other features of his face. So oftentimes, when there are high levels of stress and the horse is extremely uncomfortable, you'll see way more than just the pinned ears as the sign of that. And pinned ears can also occur for just a couple seconds at a time because horses typically don't overuse it or pin their ears at each other for extended periods of time unless they're uncomfortable. So it's a means of communication, but it's not always a bad thing for them to say, hey, like, you're a little too close, go away, or hey, that's my food, go away. It's a means of communicating and getting each other to move, typically. So before we get further into this and start discussing the other signs of stress and pain in horses that might accompany pinned ears and other responses, what I do want to talk about is the idea that forward ears for horses then means that they're happy all the time. This is not the case, and a lot of really stressed horses or even horses in pain may have their ears forward. Um, and also forward ears can mean that they're focusing on something that they're afraid of. So it really depends, again, on context and what the other body language signals are telling you. Because forward ears can mean happy, but if a horse has their ears pinned forward all the time with no change, it's generally speaking because they see something that they're afraid of and then they're fixating on it. So context matters, the situation matters, and we're gonna just show some photos of some horses with their ears forward and discuss what's wrong with them or what isn't wrong with them. Okay, so as you can see here, this horse does not have its ears pinned back. In fact, they are mostly forward, but slightly turned out. I personally call this airplane ears, where they're kind of turned out to the side and the distance between the ears increases at the base of the ears. This is on the equine grimace scale as a sign of potential pain or stress. And again, the severity of it depends on all of the other factors that the horse is displaying. So your horse Horse having their ears like this alone doesn't necessarily mean that it's stressed or in pain, but it's something to consider and you want to look at the other stuff too. So the eye is the most telling feature of the horse in my opinion here. And what I mean by the eye being the worst feature in terms of stress is that you see a peak above the eye right there. The eye muscle is contracting and it's tense and the eye is half closed despite the fact that the horse should be more alert in this setting because it is exercising. Since it is a photo, the horse could be blinking but again, the facial structure and how tense everything else is, is what is telling me that this horse is stressed, along with the fact that it's in super tight side reins. And then you can also see that the jaw is really tense and the lips are tense and pulled back and the chin is disappeared. Now, what's a video about equine pain face without a photo of Marilyn Little? Because she is the queen of creating equine pain face. This is RF Scandalous while well on course in cross country, and this is an absolutely deplorable photo. Aside from the obvious blood in the mouth, there are lots of problems here. This horse is extremely stressed. You can see a big peak around the eye and the eye is really tight, fixed, staring forward and wide. Sometimes they have wide eyes, sometimes they'll be half closed. It really depends. This horse is staring fixed forward and wide with a ton of tension around the eye, which is not surprising because it basically has a serrated knife in its mouth and she's yanking on it and it's bleeding. On top of this, the mouth is really stressed, extremely flared nostrils, which again isn't unusual for a cross-country horse when they're working this hard, but the tension everywhere else is what tells you that this horse is stressed. She's in pain and she's stressed. This one here is a really good example of a whale eye, and a whale eye is when they show partial white of the eye. Not all cases where the horse is showing white, they'll be in pain because sometimes they'll show white when they're kind of rotating their eyes to see something that might be in their blind spot or when they're trying to see something when they're tied up and can't move their head to see it properly. But here you can see that her eyes are really wide. You can see the peak above the eye again. Ears are wide at the base and turned out. Tightness in the mouth, flat chin, and the whale eye. So all of those things show that she is stressed. Now this is a friend's horse who is showing some pain and discomfort. This is when he was going through some medical treatment and wasn't fully comfortable and he's showing a lot of tension this is a very expressive horse you can see the peak above his eye and you can see a lot of tension in the muscles here he probably has his teeth crammed together and then the chin is really flat this is a good example of how flat the chin looks when they are stressed and yeah there's just tension all over the face and then again as mentioned before the wideness of the base of the ears the same horse as previously shown with the pain face and now you can see that there's a clear difference in how soft his eye is here because he's not in pain here. This is after he's been treated and he's nice and relaxed in his stall. Way less facial tension, no peak above the eye, ears are forward and not turned out in the stiff outward stance where they have the huge width between the base of them. And like I said, the ears are always moving on a normal horse. They don't keep them fixed in one position. And he's inhaling here. So the nostril looks a little bit tight, but it's not due to stress. He's just taking
taking a breath and you can tell by the position of his nostril. But the huge difference that I see is with the eye. And I think that's the part where everyone should be looking is the clear difference in the eye because you see the eye here, big peak and very strained muscles. And then back to here, way, way softer. This is a really good compare and contrast of Milo. This photo is not super good quality, but you can tell he has a bit of a whale eye here. His ears are strained forward because he's looking at something that would be over in this direction and scaring him. So he's in a freeze state of a flight response where he's kind of looking and he has a hard stiff expression with the whale eye really tight through here in the mouth and fixated on what's going on somewhere else. Where in comparison this is him when he's older the eye is a lot softer. He's more relaxed. He's looking at something because we were waving something around to get him to put his ears forward but he's not afraid of it. He's looking calmly and his expression is much much softer. Milo is in my opinion one of the most expressive horses I've worked with. So here you can see a soft relaxed expression. His nose is nice and relaxed, no peaks above his eye, and he's got a really nice soft eye. And then this is a photo from when I had just first gotten him. Way more tense in here. He is younger so his head is also smaller here, but whale eye here. And he's just looking at the photographer so his ears aren't doing the airplane ears, but there's a lot of tension in the mouth here and no visible chin. This is another favorite comparison of mine right here. The one of him when he was really sick and emaciated and neglected versus him now. So this is a really profound difference in the eye because this would be pain face here where the lid is half closed and very very dull. You can't see his mouth in this but it would probably be strained. And then here we have a really nice soft alert eye and that's the difference in how profound his change in comfort was. Okay, so I think we got a pretty good baseline of judging discomfort off of facial expression, so now we'll go into some of the other behaviors you will see in horses who are stressed or uncomfortable, starting with teeth grinding. It's not at all uncommon for horses to adopt teeth grinding during stressful or painful situations. And generally speaking, once it becomes a habit, they'll do it when they are stressed. So it's a good tell if you're not physically looking at your horse to listen to them and if they're teeth grinding or chewing on the bit excessively or gaping their mouth while you're riding them. These are all signs that they are stressed or uncomfortable. Another sign of discomfort or stress that's fairly common is frequent swishing of the tail or wringing the tail. Swishing is generally side to side where wringing they will lift it and kind of rotate it in a circle. And obviously they do use their tails to swish off flies and they also use them for cooling purposes during the summer. So it's context that matters. If it's repeated and constant throughout the ride or it's associated with specific things in the ride like asking for a transition or certain parts of the arena or certain places that you go like only at shows then it's pretty clearly an indicator of stress or discomfort so while swishing of the tail is a normal behavior if it's repeated and very frequent it's a sign that there could be stress or discomfort also, this isn't to say that you're a terrible person if your horse ever swishes their tail. Some horses will flick their tail over fences and it's just their style of jumping and how they move their back. But if your horse swishes frequently or around certain things, it's definitely worth looking into. Like for example, Milo doesn't like it when his tail gets wet. So anytime after having a bath and washing his tail or on rainy days, he swishes it a ton while it's wet and he hates it because he doesn't like the feeling when it touches his legs. So it's not always something super severe or really severe stress. It's just something that I don't think should be ignored or written off as just a quirk because there's lots of horses who do tail ringing frequently and constantly that are in pain or super stressed. And then we also have excitement outburst type behaviors, like these videos of Milo before I had him out in enough turnout. He's really quite anxious and he's reacting heavily by leaping around to burn off energy he wasn't able to in his smaller paddock. Also, contrary to popular belief, horses that rush fences severely are usually stressed or anxious. It's not due to the joy of enjoying jumping and wanting to run at it, which is why it's such a dangerous habit because horses will literally take off from dangerous distances or crash through fences if they start rushing badly enough. And this is why building relaxation is so important. So in these old clips of my horse, you can also see that he flips his head around and tries to evade contact with the bit, and that's due to mouth discomfort. And he's just trying to get away from me. And it's not because he likes jumping, it's because he's stressed and I didn't take the time to build a foundation for him. 
Okay, so that's enough about negative behaviors. Now let's talk about some positive ones. So in these photos, you can see that Banksy's ears have width between the base, like I mentioned in the stressed photos. However, the difference here is that his face is more relaxed and happy, and he's pursing his lips in the way he is because he likes where he's being scratched. So his face shows that he likes where he's being groomed and he's enjoying it. It's the same kind of concept as when you scratch your dog somewhere and they kick their leg like they're itching somewhere because they like the spot. So this is what he does. A lot of horses will purse their lips like him, or some will even like clap their teeth together and kind of bite at the air and that can also be a stress behavior but the difference is that they won't direct it in your direction trying to bite you and they'll also kind of be pursing their lips and leaning into the scratch so this shows that they like where you're grooming them and they're participating in mutual grooming in that they're air grooming because they like what you're doing also, so long as stuff stays below a certain threshold, some of the horses like freeze responses and investigative behaviors can actually be quite positive, but the key is keeping them below a threshold of stress that's too much. So like in these photos of my horses looking at Banksy's one balloon for his first birthday, they're all a little bit nervous and cautious of it, but you can see that they want to approach it. They're super curious and they want to see if it's dangerous or not. So they look at it from afar first and then they gradually creep forward. They'll touch at it. They might back up a little bit and then they'll look at it again. And this is why you don't chase your horse with things that they're not sure of yet. But as you can see here, they're all super curious and horses are naturally curious animals. So that curiosity can be really positive, but you just don't want to make it so stressful that they go to a point where they feel the need to flee. Similarly, behaviors like bucking or rearing and other behaviors that may indicate pain or stress under saddle in certain circumstances, they can also be positive, playful behaviors. Boy horses tend to be more likely to rear and strike out at each other and even fake mount each other, and that's because a lot of play behaviors serve the purpose of teaching them life skills that they would need to use in the future as adult horses. So horses who are going to breed, they need to practice fighting behaviors like rearing and nipping at each other, and then also breeding behaviors like mounting, whereas mares are more likely to practice grooming behaviors than mutual grooming, and they'll still play, and geldings will also groom each other, but they have kind of gender-specific play styles to an extent. This is why I think it's such valuable information to watch your horse in turnout and see how they interact with other horses and what they actually do on their own time and how they look while doing it. Doing this will allow you to see their natural state and it'll make it easier to tell when they're stressed or when they're starting to get stressed or if they're in pain. So watching them on their own time, it may be boring or it may seem not worthwhile to not go to the barn if you're not intending to ride, but it'll be very hard to judge your horse's state of mind if you don't look at them what they're doing outside of the time you spend riding or working them. Another horse behavior that's typically viewed as positive by people is the phlegm response, and that's because it looks like horses are smiling, so it gets anthropomorphized. It's not a negative response typically, it's just horses trying to bring a smell that they find new or weird closer to their nostrils, or it's also really common in stallions when they smell a mare in heat. So it's not at all unusual, however, it actually can be a negative response if it's spontaneous. Spontaneous and repeated phlegm responses can indicate pain, but it's in very specific situations. So it would be in the absence of a scent for them to need to bring closer to their nose, and it's usually repeated far more often than what you would see with a weird smell. Proper management is one of the most crucial components to the happiness and health of your horse and limiting anxiousness and pain-related behaviors under saddle. By allowing them proper management and getting them outside as much as possible, you benefit their circulatory system by allowing them to move around properly in a way that they cannot in a stall. And it also is better for respiration because they're not inhaling ammonia all the time as they would in a stall. And on top of this, the mental health aspect is huge because lower stress levels will make them healthier and less prone to injury. Horses who are stalled and denied turnout for lengthy periods of time are more likely to have explosiveness as they come out of the stall, and they're more likely to become injured from this. So keeping them mentally healthy is a very, very important part of having that physical health. And it'll also benefit your relationship with your horse if they're happier and therefore coming out less anxious from the very beginning. This will make your rides go easier and you're starting with a lower baseline of anxiety and stress, which means they're less likely to continue trigger stacking and increasing their stress level to the point where they can't manage it anymore. So proper management helps you out a ton. 
Contrary to popular belief, the more money that is spent caring for a horse doesn't necessarily indicate better care. In fact, a lot of elite competition horses have been found to have a higher baseline of stress, and this is figured to be due to the fact that they're more likely to spend extended time in stalls. And stalling has a lot of negative implications on the horse, and it predisposes them to issues such as cribbing or weaving as a means of handling the boredom and subsequent stress. So it's really important to improve your management if you want to have the best horse you can have because if they come out of the stall happy and relaxed you'll have a horse that first of all enjoys their time with you more and is in a better mindset for learning because the more stressed a horse is they can't retain information in the same way as a relaxed horse can so good management is really really important and unfortunately it isn't acknowledged enough or prioritized enough even with our upper level riders and we see a high instance of stressed horses because of it and a lot of times these stress behaviors are merely written off as quirks despite the clear signs of stress and or pain on the faces of these horses. This isn't to say that any level of stress is a bad thing. Stress is a normal and regular part of life for any animal, whether they live in the wild or are domesticated. However, as their caretakers, it is our job to try to limit this level of anxiety whenever we can, and when it appears, we should be working to reduce it rather than ignoring its presence. As you can see here in this video of Harlow, she's anxious. She had an outburst to release her nervous energy, and then after that, she was great and relaxed to finish her work. I let her have her moment. I didn't discipline her for it, and then I redirected her behavior to something more positive once she relaxed enough for me to safely approach her. And then with Milo and Bank, they're both two different horses, and I think recognizing personalities is important. Milo is a more naturally nervous horse due to his abusive past, whereas Banksy has never known any abuse in his life, so he's very brave and willing and very precocious. So training according to their personality type and handling them how the specific horse needs to be handled is important, but it's also important to acknowledge the fact that the learning theory pertaining to horses does apply to all horses, so all horses can learn using positive reinforcement and for any animal punishment used in excess or improperly timed has a lot of negative fallout because it only ever tells them what they are doing wrong rather than what the right thing is so it makes them less likely to trial behaviors because they'll be afraid of doing the wrong thing and getting punished and this is reflected even in humans it's not just in animals so all of these things are things to consider when you are training your horse and assessing their behavior it's not a weakness to have a strong horse and to acknowledge it, but it is a weakness to ignore it and pretend it's not a problem when you are perfectly within your means to try to adapt the behavior and help them relax. I hope this video was enjoyable and, and educational for you and I hope it gave you some things to think about in terms of reading your horse's behavior and how to work through anxiety when it occurs. I didn't get to get into all of the learning theory topics that I wanted to so I'm going to be doing a series of this because I also want to talk about calming behaviors like licking and chewing and why they occur and whether they're good or bad and so on and so forth. There's a lot of content to cover for this but I do feel like recognizing stress and pain in the horse is one of the most important things and also recognizing the role management plays for this so I wanted to go in depth on recognizing pain face and also using photos from very well respected upper level riders to show that even people at the top of the sport can have stressed or in pain horses and I also think it's important to remember that someone being a good rider and being successful in the sport doesn't mean that their management is ethical from an animal ethics standpoint and it doesn't mean that their horses are getting their five free freedoms of animal welfare met, and it also doesn't mean that they are super experienced at reading and interpreting behavior, and I would even go as far to say that a lot of horse people deliberately avoid interpreting behaviors that would only serve to uproot their plans with the horse, and this isn't just specific to upper level equestrians, it's all equestrians, and it's cognitive dissonance, we've all been guilty of it at some point probably, I know I have, and it's something that we all need to work on and address and talk about because it gets swept under the rug far too often and luckily in more recent years this topic has become more talked about which is great so it's good that people are talking now and that we're spreading the word because people can't learn about things or know where to start for research if they don't even know what to look for or that a certain concept is out there in the first place so that's what I hope to do with videos like this for the second part of this I'll go into detail on learning theory topics and what people are talking about when they talk about positive reinforcement R plus or negative 
negative reinforcement, R minus, and all of the quadrants and all of that stuff. So I'll go into detail on that to give kind of a crash course on those types of things as well as talking about calming signals and other horse behaviors because there's also a lot of stress behaviors as well as a lot of relaxed happy behaviors that I missed in this video. Horses are very emotional animals and they're super expressive. They have a lot of facial expressions, they have a lot of behaviors that need discussing and I can't cover them all in a video and I think if I made this too long no one would want to watch it. So anyways I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope it was helpful. Let me know what you think down in the comments and if you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe and I'd really appreciate it if you'd share it because my channel has tanked since I got hacked last year. Thank you and also check out my merch and my new saddle pad line down in this description below. I really appreciate it and I hope you guys like this. <laughs>